My adventure game has a map that's made up of lots of rooms, and now I need to put some treasures into them. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my complete guide to adventure game programming. Today, I'm going to explain how to add lists of treasures to the locations, that's the rooms, in your game. In the last lesson, I created a Thing Holder class. A Thing Holder is any type of thing that is able to contain a list of other things. For example, a room is a thing holder because it may contain a list of treasures. And the player, which is an instance of the actor class, well, that is also a thing holder because the player may be able to collect treasures. A thing holder object is not itself a list of things. It's an object that contains a list of things. In my code, a list of things is called a thing list. And this is my thing list class. Thing list is a generic list. That is, it's a list that's typed to hold objects of a specific class. Here, those are objects of the thing class or of its descendants. In .NET, the list class comes with a lot of useful methods to add and to remove and locate objects in a list. The actual type or class of objects that can be stored in the list is specified by putting a class name between pointy brackets, as I've done here. Now that's C-sharp code. In Java, you can do something similar by typing an array list, as I've done here. Only thing objects and their descendants can be stored in this list. This is my C-sharp code once again. My thing list class can use methods that are already defined in the .NET list class, such as add and add range, to add one or more objects of the defined type to a thing list collection. You can see I've done that in the thing holder class. Now I'm all ready to add treasures to my rooms. Here I am in the main game file, that's game.cs in my C sharp code. I start by creating some lists of treasures. Then when I create a room that contains some treasures, I pass that list to the room constructor. When the room does not contain any treasures, I pass an empty thing list. The room constructor receives that list as its final argument, and it passes it to its ancestor class, thing holder, which simply assigns it to its list of things. You can do something quite similar in Java. Here, for example, I create some lists of treasures and pass them to some rooms. The room class passes the list to its ancestor, thing holder and that assigns it to its list of things. If you want a more detailed explanation of this Java code, you can find it in my book about programming adventure games in Java. And if you want to go deeper into C Sharp, I also have a C Sharp adventure game programming book. Now, you don't need to buy my books to follow this course, but of course I'd be very pleased if you do, and they will help you to go faster and deeper into game programming. Anyway, now that we have rooms containing treasures, we need to let the player take treasures and also to drop them. That's the subject of the next lesson. Once again, thanks for watching and to follow the course in order, be sure to click the playlist link, which is under this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up and to get notifications whenever I upload new lessons, be sure to subscribe and click the little bell.